Welcome to Turnpike Sports. I am Dave Weishattle, and as always, I am joined by my co-host and producer, Doug Weishattle. Doug, how did you love the Masters? I have to admit, it was the very first time I watched all four rounds of the Masters. It was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. And, and, and of course, we witnessed history, along with a whole bunch of other people, obviously, and we'll talk about that later in the show and one of the eggs that's coming up, but... It was actually a really fun Masters to watch. And we had that extra element of being able to bet on it in New Jersey. and That always um, adds something. Yep, yep. I, I, I did not place a bet on Tiger, which I wish I did, but um, I bet on a couple to make it into the top ten, and I did well. I did the, the same thing and, uh, you know, good results. But, Absolutely. Uh, you know, I can't believe two holes in one. Uh, it truly unbelievable and that was one of the prop bets that i did not go with so i i, so I probably should have well look in gambling like in everything else hindsight is twenty twenty. so yeah yeah and uh it, again no one could have predicted tiger woods coming out of nowhere technically it is a great know. story though it is a great great comeback story. story all that uh you know it was great to watch that oh, happen. Boy, it was, it's a fantastic. We, we had Masters. We had the NBA playoffs. We had the NHL playoffs. And I can't believe Tampa Bay Lightning is gone from the uh, playoffs. Now. So they, is uh, they, Pittsburgh. They were swept. Pittsburgh so, got swept, too, by the Islanders. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely, yep. uh, two teams that you thought would do very well in the playoffs did not do I'll tell you well. the one hockey team that's happy about Tampa Bay is Boston because oh. they can't beat Tampa Bay. Yeah, I know. I, I think they're breathing a sigh of relief. And later on in the show, I get to talk to John Brennan from usbets.com and njonlinegambling.com. We're going to talk about sports books and casinos. And you want to know how March Madness did in the uh, sports books in Jersey? Well, we're going to tell you all about it with John Brennan. Well, like I said, it was a busy week, so let's take a trip down the turnpike. And today's trip down the turnpike is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Exit 1. Well, we hinted at some of the betting stuff with regards to the Masters right off the bat. So I figured let's continue that talk because a lot of the sports books took it on the chin. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think um, it, well, we, the big bet last uh, week in the news was the $85,000 bet in Las Vegas. And uh, and I guess he went at 14 to 1 odds. 14 to 1 in Vegas. And the and guy won, what, $1.2 million, well, something like 1. that? $1.19 million and yeah, you, know, you factor in the eighty five thousand, and the check that we, uh, William Hill U.S. gave them was uh, what one point two seven five or something, something like that. that. Yeah, it was their largest liability, I guess, uh, golf liability. Sure, in the United States, in their history in the United States. Yeah, and 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 and, and good for William Hill. They made a they made a big spectacle of it, which is great. It's great PR for them. PR was great for all of these guys. I mean, but they weren't all, they weren't the only big loser in all this. I guess you can call them losers. I, I, at some point, they, they turn into winners with the PR they're getting. FanDuel actually lost two million. Okay, uh, they they lost a million from their uh, sports book, and then they had a DFS a daily fantasy sports contest involving him. They lost another million there. Interesting. So uh, they might be the biggest loser. I didn't do fantasy this year. I know I was. I'm I was, not good at golf fantasy. Yeah, I, I, I mean, basketball, that. hockey, you know, football, all that stuff. I can do. I never think of fantasy for golf, and that's on me because I, I should I should be thinking about it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very bad at fantasy on golf. So, well, also bet stars. First time I think we're mentioning them on the show. Uh, worst way to do it, but they lost about three hundred and fifty, three hundred sixty thousand on Tiger Woods. Uh, they actually had a. Let's see, a hundred to one odds on Tiger. Okay, uh, ten wow. ten dollar bet limit. Probably smarter on the uh, very very, to do that. very smart on making the bet limit. Way to look ahead. Yep. Uh, DraftKings, like I said, they had they were in the million dollar loser club. Uh, and uh, actually, I saw one report on Twitter, and MGM Resorts broke even. Well, good. I, I guess they had other uh, you know bets on other people. Which, which by the way. Going into the Masters, Tiger Woods was not where mon people were placing their money. I mean, no, there was no. a lot better people 
that year who were coming into the Masters on a really high winning streak. And, you know, it just I, – I never thought of Tiger winning the Masters. That's why it makes it such a great story. What's it been, uh, 4,000 days since uh, <laughs> he won the Masters? So I don't think really too many people – until maybe the third or fourth day, you start seeing it happen. It's just you were – you know, you're worried about, boy, he's older. He, uh, he had back problems, which is – death for a golfer and uh, he he worked through it and good for him yeah and but you know i i I never gave a thought of putting some money on him. good for the people that sure you know thought of tiger yeah courageous very good all righty new jersey and pennsylvania both released their sports betting numbers um good good signs for both uh new jersey the only difference between new jersey and pennsylvania still is there's no mobile betting Mm-hmm. And at some point, they got to get that going. Well, I guess Pennsylvania, I think they mentioned a couple of months ago at a uh, meeting or a hearing that I guess they're looking f- toward the summer to roll out some mobile sports betting. That that was the word from Pennsylvania a couple of months ago. That might change because uh, it's been forever. Well, it, it's not only mobile sports betting, but mobile gaming they're dragging their butts on, too. Yeah, yeah they, online they, casinos, yeah. And, and New Jersey is showing mobile betting is king. And they constantly They constantly show the numbers and... Uh, New Jersey sports betting handle was three hundred seventy-two million dollars in March. Uh, Pennsylvania's uh, total handle was forty-four and a half million in March, and uh, the difference really is all the mobile betting in New Jersey. Uh, Thirty-two million dollars in revenue for the sports books for Jersey, five point five uh, million in revenue for Pennsylvania. Uh, let's see the the leader surprisingly, and they've been saying this all along. Fanduel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's FanDuel, not only the physical one in the Meadowlands, but the online book, and also their deal with PointsBet. Sure. Is sure. making them take over the market share over DraftKings. DraftKings was out like a shot. And well, they were the first ones in New Jersey. Well, first ones in the market first doesn't one. always mean winner in the market. That's yeah, the well, problem. Yeah, well, they had a head start. They, had, they were the first mobile sports book in New Jersey, and I guess that really you know helped them out a lot. But I guess everything's coming back to the pack now. Yeah, and according to the numbers... Fandle had 55% of the total revenue of the New Jersey market. Wow. That's how well they did. Uh, basketball accounted, you know, uh, they had the March Madness. Uh, everybody, both Pennsylvania and, and New Jersey, benefited from March Madness. In New Jersey, basketball uh, uh, accounted for $205, $206 million of the of the record-breaking month. They set a record there. Pennsylvania set a record as well for uh the uh, the sports betting handles was strongest revenue five and a half million for them. Well, and Pennsylvania had two new sports books open, right? Valley Forge and the Valley Forge Race and Sports Book. <laughs> There's two sports books in Valley Forge. One is the Valley Forge Casino, yeah, which is Fanduel. Yep. The other one is Valley Forge uh, Race and Sports Book, which is the OTB or whatever you want to call it, off track betting uh, site that's owned by Parks. Yep. So uh, they 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 launched mid March and they actually did pretty well. Uh, the Valley Forge uh, sports book, the actual Fanduel Valley Forge Casino sports book, had two million dollars, and Valley Forge Race and sports books brought in seven hundred six thousand. And this was midway through the state they opened. They right? They midway through the month of March that they opened. They had half a month. Wow. Yeah. So uh, they did pretty good. I mean, I mean uh, you know, as a kid growing up in New Jersey, you know, the school always brought us to Valley Forge for a field trip to see the uh, camp where Washington stayed that that terrible winter. And now, boy, there are two sports books <laughs> right where uh, we used to go on field trips. Yes. Now, while you're thinking of the uh, Washington yes, right. camp, you can actually bet. Yeah. Now I can reminisce and uh, go place a bet. Exactly. Uh, the one surprising thing, and I, I guess this is. Uh, indicative of the New Jersey market, the DraftKings branded sports book at resorts, the physical sports book, did almost no revenue, eighty five thousand for the month of March. Wow! So, uh, I, I it's showing mobile is king here. Everybody's making do with uh, the mobile stuff, and any states looking at uh, at sports betting, you got to look at mobile. Well, well, look, when when you're talking about New Jersey, especially like the DraftKings at Resort, you know, you're getting into the summer tourist months in Atlantic City. So I'm sure those numbers are going to go up when people oh, start yeah. visiting the Jersey Shore in the summertime. Exactly. And last but not least for our sports betting exit, congratulations to Dennis Drazen of Monmouth Park. Going, Absolutely, yeah. Being inducted into the Sports Betting Hall of Fame. Uh, he's joining Chris Christie, the New Jersey former governor. And Las Vegas bookmaking legend Art Manteris. 
Is there a physical place for this Hall of Fame? Or I know I know they're getting. I guess the there's a cer- physical induction. There's an <laughs> induction in yeah. At, I guess in New York. Yeah, right? it's going to be held April 25th at the Sky Room in Manhattan. It's part of the uh, SBC uh, sports betting uh, conference going on. Okay. So uh, they're going to have betting on Sports America. That's going to be having the Hall of Fame ceremony. Uh, that's being held at the Meadowlands. So congratulations to Dennis, congratulations to Governor Christie, and congratulations to uh, Art Manteris there for getting into the uh, Hall of Fame class this year for sports betting. Absolutely. Exit 2. Two interesting things happened with the esports community here. Uh, first off, and we've we've talked about this throughout the shows with the media rights and how it's growing on TV. I, I, it's, it's amazing. Every week there's a brand new media deal, and these things are huge. Yeah, and this is the first time we're going to be talking about FIFA. The okay. Soccer, the, the soccer. soccer stuff. The soccer. The, this is all part of the FIFA E-Nations Cup, E-Nations World Cup events that are going on. Fox Sports has secured the television and streaming rights for all their events. Wow, that's great. Um, they're, they're having, let's see, it's starting... Uh, let's see. It began last weekend, and it's going through July and August, culminating with the E World Cup. Uh, so uh, I, I've seen the, FIFA was one of the first esports events. Sure, sure. And it's nice seeing it continually to grow. I mean, this is London. This is now worldwide stuff. It's great that Fox Sports is involved. I, I'm I'm curious to see where Fox Sports is going to air this. I mean. I don't know about any other cable companies, but my, mine has about like three or four Fox Sports uh, channels. So I, I don't know where this is going to be. Held well, they're at. they're going to they're going to have everything, both television and streaming. So it's probably FS2 or one of the other Fox Sports things that you just mentioned, and okay. also their streaming stuff. They're also partnering with this platform, Caffeine, which is is actually it's almost like a uh, Twitch competitor. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's fan social broadcasting platform, that sort of stuff. So what what is it? You go online and go to Caffeine, and it goes... And you click on the uh, the link that goes to the oh. FIFA World Cup stuff. And the cool thing about Caffeine and what they're doing with the FIFA eSports, they're going to have their subscribers in the U.S. They can live host their own streams of the tournaments. They can do their own play-by-play, basically. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, comment on what's going <laughs> That's on. That's interesting. So, yeah, okay. it, it's, it's very interesting what's going on. And you know, between Caffeine, Fox Sports, the, uh, FIFA also has deals with Sky Sports. So uh, this is a continually growing eSports area. And it's nice to see FIFA growing along with League of Legends, um, you know, Counter-Strike, that sort of stuff. Sure, absolutely. And speaking of Counter-Strike, we have a new Counter-Strike tournament coming to the United States. How's okay. that for a segue? Wow, all right. Uh, the Blast Pro Series. Uh, they're going to have a U.S. presence. Their first one is going to be in Miami coming up. Uh, and the interesting thing about the Blast Pro Series, the guys who run this come from a traditional entertainment background. They do tournament, uh, not concerts, festivals, that sort of stuff. Well, it seems like a natural progression. I mean, it, it seems like, you know, I, I've seen some of the footage of these events, and they almost seem like a concert, you know? Well, they're going to be handling this. It's Refresh Entertainment. They're going to be doing this with uh, the Blast Pro Series. It's a seven regular season tournament series with a global fina- finale. Okay. Uh, before, they uh, had tournaments in Copenhagen, Denmark, Istanbul, and they're, they finished their 2018 season in Lipson, Portugal. So now they're bringing one to Miami, and they're going to also be partnering with Burger King. Wow! Hey, all to right do, to do <laughs> to do a Los Angeles event. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So you know, Burger King is getting into the esports. They're going to run an online competition to, for tickets to the LA to the LA stuff in July. It should be interesting to see if Burger King promotes it at their restaurants. I guess they would, I, right? They probably will. They would. The one thing I like about this Blast Pro series. They're treating it almost like a normal U.S. sporting event or a concert. They, they're going to have an A-shaped stage with large screens, surround sound. They're going to have fan cameras so you can see the audience. Okay. Uh, t-shirt guns. Which are extremely dangerous. Yes. <laughs> Those things are... <laughs> and, and here's the one thing I like about this. They're going to have explainer videos. You know, So if you don't know the game that's being played... They're going to teach you before you watch it. See, that's great. That's you're, you're you're building your fan base. That's a great way to do it. Yeah, not a lot of these uh, uh, tournaments do that, but at least the Blast Pro Series is trying to get the casual fan into it. Because I honestly, 
if I watch a Counter Strike game versus a League of Legends, for, other than you know the graphics look maybe different. I wouldn't really be able to follow what the action is and what the goal of the game is. Yeah. Exit three. Getting back on the field and off the TV. We just had the biggest deal in lacrosse history happen. Wow. Lacrosse is getting huge. You know, it it, it ebbs and flows, but I I like lacrosse. Uh, This is because it's a new league. There's a brand new league coming, the Premier Lacrosse League. Uh, Adidas has teamed up to give them their official athletic footwear and apparel. So uh, they actually have a really good sponsor in terms of promotion and everything. Adidas has always been great, not only with giving the apparel, but also promoting events. See, that's what lacrosse needs. I remember growing up, they they tried to do this indoor box lacrosse, and they made it sound like it's a street fight with sticks. But, you know, you went there. At least the commercials did. (laughs) At least the commercials. And when you went there... You know, it's it was lacrosse. I mean, it, it was nothing special about it. Lacrosse is a great sport. I don't think they have to uh, boost it up with some kind of, you know, false expectations. But it's great that Adidas is getting involved in lacrosse. Now. And, and you know, they call it an apparel deal, but it's really a little bit more than just an apparel deal. They're going to be doing brand activations at different events during the inaugural season of the league. Um, they're also going to be doing not only apparel for the players, but coaches, staff, they're going to have all different types of uh, clothing that's going to be uh, for sale with the league, all that stuff. And they're also going to be buying commercial time during the broadcast on NBC Sports. So NBC Sports is also involved with this league, which is going to probably give it a lot more uh, attention than probably previous leagues. Uh, they're also going to be doing original programming based upon the league. Well, that's what you need to do. I mean, you need to promote it. Yeah, and the one thing I like about this new league uh, it's different than traditional lacrosse leagues. It's not going to be home f- home versus visitor games, all that stuff. It's going to be almost like a traveling tour league. Oh, okay. They're going to pick a location, and they're all going to play. Okay, so they're not going to be called the... Oh, no, they're pen- going to have different, the, different I mean, teams. I know they're going to be different teams, but those teams aren't going to be based in a certain... Like the Philadelphia you're, you're going to have lacrosse guys, or whatever you call it. Whatever, they're, yeah, gonna... they're not going to be home visitor. Okay. It's going right. to be... You're going to go to, say... You're going to go to Philly, and all the teams in the, the league are going to play a series of games in Philly. Okay, all right. You go to Dallas. They're going to do the exact same thing. They're going to do the same thing across the country throughout the... The okay, so season. the individual teams will not be representing in a specific city. So they're all going to be... Well, they're, they're going to have the specific cities. They're not going to play in a specific city. Okay. There's all not right. going to be a home game. Let me okay. put it that way. Okay. Everyone's going to be traveling. It's a traveling tour. Okay. Exit four. And last but not least, we talked a little bit about the uh, Tiger Woods betting for the Masters. And, we, you know, we talked about how many... Uh, how we watched it and all that. The Tiger effect on golf viewership is amazing. And the fact that the last two rounds were so close and so much fun for people to watch and so intense, they actually, uh, CBS Sports, saw some of their highest ratings. No, I, I, I can imagine that. That was I, Everyone I know was watching it. Everyone was, <laughs> was mesmerized by it. Well, the third round had some astonishing numbers. They, they had a ratings increase of 5% from last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had a 6.0 rating and a one and a 15 share, which is huge for golf, live golf anyway. Sure. Um, they also had a peak rating of of a seven share and a seven rating and a, and a 16 share around the six to six fifteen hour p.m. And it, it was act- actually kind of interesting. That's when you started seeing Tiger start take over too. Yeah, yeah. Middle of the afternoon, towards the evening, and that you know again that's. The fact that Tiger Woods was playing, I, I don't think anyone else has had that much of an effect on ratings on a third round at least, and then the fourth round. Wow, did they they were setting records for this? This was the Masters finals final round was the highest rating morning golf event in thirty four years. Yeah, I think they started early. I think they were worried about the weather. They started effect. at nine a.m. because they were expecting bad weather. And I think and, they and did I, have bad weather. They at did. The end. Yeah, I think they had the uh, jacket ceremony. They didn't have it outside where they usually have it. I guess they had it inside, or they did something different with the jacket ceremony. They they gave them the jacket and the the, the presentation and all that stuff was held indoors. Yeah, as opposed to outside. But the the ratings uh, highest in thirty four years. Final round peaked with a twelve point one rating and a twenty eight share, which is almost unheard of 
for live golf. Uh, the final round live coverage and its encore presentation had an 11.1 rating. Wow, the encore presentation. The, you know, you know what? You know, is an important <laughs> event when the repeat gets that good of a rating. Well, here the encore presentation of the final round alone got a 3.4 rating, which is huge for. Uh, a, a rebroadcast of an already happening event. Yeah, you know what happened, but exactly. you're still watching it. <laughs> and it, it's it's you know what it is. I can't believe what I just saw. I'm going to see it again. That's what happened. The one thing I want to see is what happens to the next event that he's playing in. Oh, I'm sure that's going to be a boost in ratings. Oh, oh, it absolutely. has to be. It has, it has to, to be. be. It has to be. I'm very curious to see what happens next. And the sports books are going crazy too. I think they're doing odds, and they're doing. Uh, Everybody's got Tiger futures. You know, yeah, Tiger futures, and how many um, how many more majors is he going to win? And, yeah, no, uh, it, it's it's kind of interesting to watch the effect on the TV side of everything, not just the sports betting side, but the TV side, the ratings, all that. So, Tiger may be the best thing that's happened to golf again. You know, when he first started, oh, and then he yeah. he fell off the map, fell off the uh, graces of everybody, whatever you want to call it. His comeback here is probably amazing for golf. Well, let me tell you something. I really enjoyed the um, over Thanksgiving weekend. They had the Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods, I don't even know what the hell they call it, Gamble-a-thon. You know that was just for gambling purposes. Oh, you mean that? But that was fascinating. That I, I love that. I just I just love that them going at it over, um, and I guess that set the stage for this. What was nice about that Tiger-Phil thing, um, it actually was kind of a proving ground that, betting and golf work really well together sure it was great it was and fun. I, I'm, I'm assuming they're planning more i would hope so i mean that was perfect for the thanksgiving weekend and and, and golf golf it may be the perfect sport for betting maybe yeah well that was this week's trip down the turnpike and that was brought to you by drizzly your online liquor store available in over 95 cities across north america drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. And as always, if you want to get in touch with us over here at Turnpike Sports, you can call or text us at 609-512-5910, 609-512-5910. Uh, at Turnpike Sports is our uh, Handles for both Facebook and Twitter. Our email address is info at turnpikesportsradio.com. Don't forget you can catch Turnpike Sports on your smart TVs, on the Roku, uh, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV program uh, platforms with our deal with Binge. Uh, you can also subscribe to the podcast I, at iTunes. We're also distributed by iHeartMedia, Stitcher Radio. You can catch us on YouTube. Don't forget to order your international bikini team calendars. Info at internationalbikiniteam.org is the email address to get the ordering information. Oh, is that it? That's it. <laughs> what a smooth segue that was. Stop yes. short in my tracks. Yeah, stick around because after this, I talk to the great John Brennan from usbets.com and njonlinegambling.com. We're going to talk all about casinos and sports betting and revenue numbers and what did March Madness mean for the sports book. So stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. <laughs> Hey, this is Dave Weishadol from Turnpike Sports with this week's Bet Flash. Even though Iowa doesn't have legal sports betting yet, that didn't stop the Catfish Bend Casino in Burlington from planning a sports book. The casino even has an agreement with PointsBet, an online sports book operator based in New Jersey, to run the book. Presently, the Iowa legislature has two versions of a bill to legalize sports betting in the state. Dennis Drazen, CEO of Darby Development, which is the owner and operator of Monmouth Park, has been elected to the Sports Betting Hall of Fame. Monmouth Park made history when it took the first legal sports bet in New Jersey on June 14, 2018. Drazen will be joining Vegas bookmaking legend Art Manteris and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie in this year's induction class. And finally, it was the bet that everyone was talking about last week. William Hill announced that it has paid James Aducci from Wisconsin $1.19 million on his Tiger Woods bet. Aducci bet $85,000 on Tiger Woods to win the Masters at 14-1 to 1 odds. It was the largest golf payout in William Hill history. From the seaside to the desert, from the betting lines to the sites online, Turnpike Sports has got you covered. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at Turnpike Sports. 
We'll get back to Turnpike Sports in a minute, but I want to talk to you about New Jersey's newest and I think best sports book, PointsBet.com. That's right, PointsBet has it all. Spread betting, money line betting, prop bets, you name it, you'll find it at PointsBet. And you can bet from anywhere in New Jersey using your mobile device. It's the only place with points betting where every point matters because every point pays. Now, PointsBet has one of the best sign-up offers in the state. Go to PointsBet.com and sign up using our promo code PIKE. That's P-I-K-E, and you'll get a $50 bonus bet plus two risk-free bets up to 1000 bucks. It's the preferred sports book of Allen Iverson and Darrell Rivas. They even had the Rivas Betting Academy hosted by NFL great Darrell Rivas. So sign up today at pointsbet.com using our promo code PIKE and start having some real fun. That's promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E. Points bet, stay sharp. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Ever wonder how a generation of millennials made millions with an iPhone just by following their passions? How some went from living in their parents' basements to becoming more famous than movie stars? For decades, there were technologies, companies, products, and market conditions all paving the way for today's social media infrastructure. The new film Influencer takes you on a journey to meet some of these people and technologies while exploring the mind and the day-to-day lives of social media influencers. Get an inside look into the world of social media influencers and the impact they have. Go on a journey inside the digital revolution. Check out Influencer today. Now available for a limited time only. Head on over to InfluencerFilms.com for a private screening of Influencer, an inside look at the digital revolution. That's InfluencerFilms.com for a private screening of Influencer, an inside look at the digital revolution. Now available for a limited time only. Free stuff is awesome, but free stuff that will spice up your bedroom is even better. Just go to adamandeve.com and select almost any one item for 50% off, and then we'll load on the free stuff. Just enter this very exclusive code, BABE16, at checkout, and you'll get 10 tantalizing free gifts, including a sexy item for him, a special toy for her, and a third item you'll both enjoy, and Six extra special bonus items that are sure to rev your engine, pique your curiosity, Mm. and even blow you away. Plus, free shipping. Always sent in discreet packaging. Go to adamandeve.com now. Get 50% off plus the 10 free gifts when you enter the exclusive offer code BABE16. That's BABE16 because without it, no free stuff. That's BABE16 at adamandeve.com. We'll get right back to the show, but I want to take a minute to talk to you about being genius. How would you like your coffee delivered right to your door every month, maybe two times a month? Well, now that can happen with Bean Genius. Bean Genius sells freshly roasted coffee from some of the best independent coffee roasters in the country at BeanGenius.com. And Bean Genius actually learns their customers' individual taste preferences, then suggests future coffee blends for them. Well, how do they do that? Well, this is the cool thing about Bean Genius. Over at BeanGenius.com, they use an algorithm which learns the coffee flavors you like and then pairs up what you like with the coffee that they have in stock. And it's all based upon you. Every time you order, the system learns. The system learns your preferences as you go along and order more and more coffee. And now, all our listeners at Turnpike Sports can get a special offer. You head on over to BeanGenius.com slash subscription, and you'll be able to get 10% off your purchase when you use our promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E, at checkout. That's 10% off at BeanGenius.com slash subscription with promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E. BeanGenius.com, the smart specialty coffee subscription service. I'll bet you 20 bucks I can get you gambling before the end of the day. No way. I'll give you three to one odds. No. Five to one. No. Ten to one. You're on. back turnpike sports here you know it's always great talking to our next guest this man has seen and written everything about casinos and sports betting and in my opinion he's one of the most talented journalists covering the gambling industry today from usbets.com and njonlinegambling.com john brennan john thanks for coming on 
Oh, thanks so much. I like that intro. <laughs> I, well, I, hey, hire me, and I'll walk in front of you in, in every room, and I'll introduce you. <laughs> so, I'm thinking about that. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, I, I want to start off with New Jersey. A, a pretty important report was released last week from the Division of Gaming Enforcement, and that was the revenue figures from Atlantic City for 2018. Uh, there was some good news and, I guess, some bad news in the report. Uh, first off, overall, what did the report say about the revenue figures for the casino industry in Atlantic City? Uh, well, we're talking about uh, January, uh, or actually March. Yeah, the, this is March Madness, obviously. So the handle was $372 million. Um, that's not as much as the January handle, $385 million. So it didn't break a record, but a little bit overlooked, I think, is that uh, the gross revenue for the uh, sports books in March was a record $32 million. Uh, that's as much as January and February combined. Um, so January, the gross revenue, for instance, was only $19 million. Um, some of that was the Patriots Super Bowl win. Um, the books lost four and a half million on that one game. Sure. So, um, you, you know, we, we follow some industry people on Twitter, probably the same people. And it's funny, they'll always be, you know, tweeting to us, uh, the books need the Eagles and Chiefs to fail on Sunday or something <laughs> like that. And it's funny because it just, just easily be better as we'll collectively get rich if the Eagles and Chiefs cover on Sunday. You know, it's the same info. And it is interesting when the betting public goes 80 or 90% on one game, um, to us and to our listeners, I think. But, um, you know, who who are we rooting for? Are we rooting for the books? I don't, I don't know if we are. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, was there one or two sports books that really did great in March, or was it across the board really great for everyone? Uh, well, uh, FanDuel at the Meadowlands is um, is running away from the field. Um, DraftKings, obviously, is, is the next big presence, um, and they have a, a, a partnership in Atlantic City. But uh, the Meadowlands racetrack um, – is really interesting because um, the online portion is, is dominant, 80% of the handle. But at the Meadowlands, um, you have people who are going to the racetrack, to the sports books uh, there, and they're betting online. So the, the, the number shows up online, but actually um, they're really attending the, the track. So I, I think that because of the um, allure of the and, and the location, obviously, just outside of New York City. Um, I think that they're getting good crowds at the Meadowlands racetrack, and a lot of them are betting online, and that's adding to the, the enormous numbers of people betting around the state online as well. You, you know, it, when sports uh, books started in New Jersey, DraftKings was number one constantly. W w why the change over to FanDuel? It seems like like everything's it's coming DraftKings is coming back to the pack a bit is there a reason for that or what's going on in New Jersey with uh, the sports books yeah i'm not sure about that and and really i think um the DraftKings is a solid number 2 so um i i think it's more FanDuel running away than DraftKings going backwards necessarily um but yeah we're kind of uh, looking into that actually um this week even um to figure it out cuz it is a little bit curious it is. I mean, they they right off the bat, DraftKings was number one every month, and it just it started to seem like it changed. It, it, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's something to look at. Um, obviously, marketing is part of it, um, but every all of them are trying all kinds of uh, incentives to try and get people uh, to take their their uh, their action. That's why the, yeah. the the Tiger Woods stuff that was out about how uh, you know. The fan, FanDuel lost about $2 million extra because they said in one Daily Fantasy Sports contest, if Tiger Woods somehow wins the thing, everybody gets a refund if you didn't have Tiger as part of your, your game. <laughs> and um, and there goes Tiger wins. But uh, there's so much publicity. And more importantly, as I wrote about, um, there are so many people who signed up for the FanDuel app on their smartphone because they wanted to get in on this uh, Masters contest, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I've talked to industry people who said – the average casual better, he's only going to have two or three sports betting apps total. He's got a lot of apps. He's got too many apps to begin with on his phone. He's thinking of getting rid of some. He doesn't want 10 of them. So to to get into that person's smartphone and get on as an app, that can last for 10 years or more. So, you know, the, the short-term loss is worth the uh, long-term gain. You know, like you, I try and keep up to date with the proposed legislation in the different states re with regard to sports betting, and I'm shocked when I see proposed legislation in other states and they don't include a mobile sports betting component, is there some reason why New Jersey is not the model for most proposed legislation when it comes to sports betting? Uh, yeah, I've actually been kind of surprised at that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, in terms of regulation of casinos over the last 40 years, um, you know, Nevada is, is well-respected and, and 
certainly uh, a model to look at. But they've been around for 70 years. So it's a little different. So when Atlantic City legalized casinos in 1978 to become the second state, um, other states by the 80s into the 90s where there's a real big boom, um, yeah, they pretty much just copied what New Jersey does in terms of regulations. And even basically, if you had approval from the New Jersey regulators, you could go to any state and they'd pretty well say, yeah, you know, New Jersey checks everybody out. So if they're good with you, we're, we're good. Um, and I thought that that would happen with um, sports betting. New Jersey has been extremely successful. Um, the online numbers are enormous, um, the biggest in the country by far. And it seemed like, oh, okay, well, they're getting 80% of the revenue from sports betting. So if you want to legalize this, um, either to raise revenue, which is tax revenue, which is one thing, or to get people away from illegal offshore books, or as a consumer protection to say, well, this way it's regulated, so if something goes wrong, we can go after the company or, or whatever, um, then you would want the online too. Um, but the legislators basically don't understand the issue and attempts to educate them are uh, failing, clearly. <laughs> You know, any, anytime we talk about figures for the sports books in New Jersey, I, I, I wonder about how it's affecting the horse racing industry because that's who it's supposed to be benefiting because that was one of the reasons why sports betting was implemented in the state. Now, you, you recently wrote a great article on NJOnlineGambling.com about the racing industry and some of their concerns. What's the latest with regard to ho the horse racing industry as it relates to sports betting in New Jersey? Yeah, you know, the, the Meadowlands Racetrack is hitting $3 million in handle on Saturday nights uh, every month, every week, basically. Um, it's up a bit from last year and the year before. And I've talked to the operator, Jeff Gural, and he, he said it, he's not convinced that it's just, well, we're getting a lot of extra sports bettors to the track, and while they're there, they're going to bet on a race. I mean, that happens a little bit, obviously. But um, he thinks just the, the, uh, the liveliness of the crowd – uh, on a Friday and Saturday night because of you have the sports bettors as well as the, the horsemen. Um, and look, let's face it, the, the, uh, the bettors are a, a much younger, a bit livelier crowd uh, than the, the horse players. And he thinks that just, just the vibe is better. You know, a lot of times if you go to a restaurant, the food is important, obviously, in the service. But if you go there and there's a lot of people there, it just seems like it's a lively place, you're a little more likely to go back. And I think that might be part of it. So um, I don't see any issues for the horse racing industry with this yet. Obviously, they get a piece of the action. Um, you know, Monmouth Park is with William Hill U.S. and, and the Meadowlands has FanDuel. Uh, so they, they're already benefiting directly by that. But uh, I don't think it's cut into their handle. Uh, as I, I wondered at times, you know, I used to ask Dennis Drazen from Monmouth Park and Jeff Garoff from the Meadowlands last year. I'm, I'm picturing a guy who goes to, to the track on a Saturday and he spends 100 he risks $100 on the races. And is he going to just risk 50 on the races and then 50 on, on sports bets? But um, they didn't expect that to happen, and I don't see any evidence yet that it does. Are the horsemen trying to, you know, really try and get into the, you know, I, I know they're, you know, when people go to the uh, sports books at the racetracks, you know, they're, they're maybe getting some extra bets. But are they trying to get into the online field a little more, or what are they hoping for with regard to that? Uh, well, you're talking about you know online, you know, uh, betting on the horse racing. That's been going on for ten years or more. So yeah, they've they've already got that set. I mean, I think the one new new wrinkle that Monmouth Park's a little more likely to try. They did it for the Haskell last summer. Mm -hmm. Is have a bet where you, you let's say you bet three races. Uh, on uh, Haskell Day, and then the fourth bet is, well, the Yankees beat the Red Sox that night, something like that. So kind of luring in both sides to say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, take a risk on a horse race and on a sporting event. And um, the, New Jersey has approved that, the regulators, for in a, for a limited fashion. Um, so there'll be a little bit of an intersection, but um, I think there's kind of room for both. I, I wasn't as convinced of that, uh, but now I'm starting to come around to that thinking. You know, I think the last time you were on, I asked about the horse track that just seems like a mystery to me, and that's Freehold. I mean, are 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 they going to start uh, having a sports book anytime soon, or they seem to be the lost racetrack in New Jersey when when it comes to sports betting? Yeah, it is a mystery to me. I I, I talked to some people there on occasion, and it's always sort of it's coming. We're working on it. You know, we're not going to get there for the start of NFL season. We're not going to get there for. The playoffs, we're not quite going to get there for the opening day of baseball. Um, it is a bit curious um, because initially I had heard from some people there, they had to figure out if they're even going to make money. You know, they've got to um, do a certain amount of renovation. And uh, if, if the handle is going to be low enough where 
they could lose. You know, obviously, in any given month, it's possible to lose. It doesn't happen often, but it's possible. You know, is it even worth their while? Because um, they're only, I think, you know, 20, 30 miles, whatever, from Monmouth Park. So can they get enough of a crowd? Um, I think their conclusion was that it was worth it, and yet they haven't been able to finalize a partnership. Um, it is a bit curious. You know, what's also interesting, I've, I've been following, I guess, the saga of a property in Cherry Hill that wants sports betting and maybe the owners don't want sports betting. What's the latest on the Cherry Hill property? Yeah, there's a lawsuit going on between uh, the, the New Jersey law that allows sports betting says the nine casinos in Atlantic City, you can have sports betting. Um, and eight of them are offering it now. And the three racetracks, you can offer sports betting, and the two of the three, as we note, are doing that. And then the site of two former racetracks could offer um, sports betting. One is the Atlantic City race course, which is kind of pointless since there's so much competition in Atlantic City. And the other is uh, uh, former Garden State Park property in, in Cherry Hill. Um, there's a lawsuit going on between the former owners of the property who have kind of like a restrictive covenant on what could happen once they sell it, and the current operators of a strip mall, which is what it is now, um, and can they get a sports book? So it's kind of being stalled by the legal uh, system right now. You know, here we always get questions from listeners about how you know how well the casinos are doing in Cherry, um, not Cherry Hill, uh, Atlantic City, and uh, how how is the health of Atlantic City and the casino industry and the online gambling in Atlantic City? Well, um, yeah, online casino gambling broke another record. Um, well, they break it every, almost every month uh, in March. It's uh, it's pretty remarkable. Uh, you know, I go back, and you can remember 2010, 11, 12, before New Jersey legalized online casino gaming in 2013. It was all about online poker. That was all the discussion. They were the, they were the lobbyists, literally. Um, they were the ones who pushed for it. They're the ones who got it to happen. And online poker's gone nowhere. Um, mm-hmm. You know, two million in handle a month, uh, 1.9, 1.8. It's, there's no growth. Um, it just hasn't worked out yet. Uh, but the online casino side, mostly slots and roulette and that sort of thing, uh, is exploding. Um, I think the state even underrated uh, how much interest there would be. And it took time. You know, I mean, literally a couple of years before there started to be more of an awareness. Obviously, we get bombarded by the commercials up here. Um, but people are starting to realize, oh, it is legal to do that. And I could try that. And my friend tried it. And so so that's um, that's that part's doing really well. You know, it was interesting that there was a report released uh, about the um, revenue uh, for the casinos in Atlantic City in 2018, and, and it said Atlantic City, the casino uh, revenue rose, but some individual casino revenue fell. Is there concern about that situation, or is it just, hey, Atlantic City's trending in the right way, so we're going to let it be? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, it, it is two sides of a coin. Yeah, yeah. The addition of two new casinos. The addition of two new casinos has led to a double-digit increase in the total revenue for the industry and thousands of more jobs, which is great for the county because it's a, that's a regional thing. Um, thousands of extra people are, are working, and they're then pumping that money back into the local economy. You know, in, in 2014 to 16, while the casinos were closing, five of them, um, Atlanta County at one point had the highest foreclosure rate in the country. I mean, it was that bad. Yeah. And so the addition of these two new casinos is a tremendous boost for – the region, um, and overall the casino industry gets larger. That being said, the seven holdover casinos, uh, most of them lost, but not didn't lose money, but they, they saw a slight decline in revenue in, in 2018 with a second half of Hard Rock and Ocean Resort opening. So um, the pie grew, but not enough yet to uh, sort of allow the holdovers to keep their, their line, and then it's just extra money coming in. So it, it, that's a little bit... It, problematic and then there's talk about showboat maybe reopening as a casino which would be a 10th casino <laughs> um and, you know i go back 10 years uh and the wall street analysts would always say 12 casinos is crazy yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous they have that many they, they know the size of the market and and what it could handle and and all that and they look at the numbers and it just doesn't add up and for years and years there were still 12 casinos and then all of a sudden you know it seemed like a blink of an eye four of them closed and then a fifth one Trump Taj Mahal closed in 2016, and then with only seven, they really picked up. I mean, all seven casinos were really recovering nicely and doing well. Um, so this eighth and ninth is is probably pushing it, and that's what these analysts said ten years ago. Seven is is great. Eight or nine are pushing it, and you know, 
more than that is is problematic, and that's kind of the way it's playing out. So the industry is doing better. The region is doing better with all the jobs, but the individual cas- the holdover casinos are not benefiting yet from you know sometimes you have more uh, restaurants near you you actually get more business because now it becomes a hub you know new brunswick or morristown or places like that um but here there's more traffic in atlantic city but it hasn't quite translated yet into uh, an increase in, in volume for the holdovers what are the casinos that are doing really well in atlantic city is this still the uh, the borgata and golden nugget or is there another one coming in that's really doing well uh, well, Borgata is still far and away the market leader. Um, yeah, um, Tropicana has been a big success story for the last five or six years. Um, resorts went from being so small that people wondered how they can even survive. Um, and they've, they've grown a bit. They're still a smaller casino, kind of a, uh, you know, regular player casino, but, um, they've improved their numbers. Um, the Three Caesars properties are, are on the larger side for the most part. Um, you know, nobody's really uh, uh, struggling that badly. Um, the only question is, will Caesars A, keep three properties, and B, if they wind up partnering with uh, with a, a casino company that has a property there, and they wind up with four again, will they go the, the other route, and like they do with Showboat, and cut back to three? Because arguably four properties in Atlantic City is, is kind of redundant. You know, if you get rid of one casino, you get rid of 25% of your workforce, and you're not going to lose 25% of your customer base. They're going to go to the other three casinos with the loyalty cards. So, um, so that that's the issue. But uh, overall, uh, the industry is doing far better than it did from what, 2006 to 16. Was was uh, was a disaster, and uh, they're on the way back. John, we're going to have to leave it at that. But I want to remind everyone that if you want to read the amazing articles written by John Brennan, you can find them at njonlinegambling.com and usbets.com. And don't forget to listen to the great podcast Gamble On with John and Eric Raskin and follow John at Twitter at Bergen Brennan. John Brennan, as always, thanks for coming on. No, thanks so much. I enjoyed it. Stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. Following their hugely successful sports betting event, Ice Sports Betting USA, Clarion Gaming has launched Ice North America, the benchmark event for industry learning and development in the North American gaming market. This one-of-a-kind conference brings together the industries of sports betting, iGaming, affiliate marketing, iLottery, and eSports from across the entire region. And it's all happening May 13th to the 15th in Boston, Massachusetts. If you're a decision maker or a supplier in the gaming industry, this is one event you cannot miss. Expert panels, networking events, there's even an investor's Day, where investors and executives gather to explore investment opportunities. This is the home of interactive gaming, and you need to be in attendance. Ice North America, May 13th to the 15th in Boston, Massachusetts. Join the MVPs and register today at IceNorthAmerica.com. Brought to you by Clarion Gaming. For more information, go to IceNorthAmerica.com. We'll get back to Turnpike Sports in a minute, but I want to talk to you about New Jersey's newest and I think best sports book, PointsBet.com. That's right, PointsBet has it all. Spread betting, money line betting, prop bets, you name it, you'll find it at PointsBet. And you can bet from anywhere in New Jersey using your mobile device. It's the only place with points betting where every point matters because every point pays. Now, PointsBet has one of the best sign-up offers in the state. Go to PointsBet.com and sign up using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you'll get a $50 bonus bet plus two risk-free bets up to 1000 bucks. It's the preferred sports book of Allen Iverson and Darrell Rivas. They even had the Rivas Betting Academy hosted by NFL great Darrell Rivas. So sign up today at pointsbet.com using our promo code PIKE and start having some real fun. That's promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E. Points bet, stay sharp. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. <laughs>
Welcome back to Turnpike Sports, and a special thank you to John Brennan from usbets.com and ngonlinegambling.com. Always great stuff from John. He's one of the best out there. Absolutely. I think he knows everything about casinos and sports betting, so uh, you definitely read his articles on usbets.com and ngonlinegambling.com. Excellent. You know, it, it's always, and the Gamble On podcast. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's always great hearing his insight into what's going on, not only with the gambling, the, the, the casinos and the sports betting, but also the horse racing. Absolutely. I mean... He talks to all the right people because he knows all the right people. So uh, the the information coming from John is always great. Oh, yeah. No, hands down, always one of the best guests. So that'll do us for this week on Turnpike Sports. See you next time on the Turnpike.